Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Now, Sheila's not crazy about chicken gizzards and hearts, but I absolutely love them, and this is my recipe. This is not anything I pulled off of YouTube. I've been doing this for the longest time, especially during football season. I love to snack on this stuff. I got another recipe that's done in a slow cooker that's also on our channel, but this is pan-fried chicken gizzards and hearts and come on over here and let's get started I want to show you a few things I got a little bit of a pet peeve for years I've been complaining that when you go to the grocery store and you buy a pack of chicken gizzards and hearts they give you a whole bunch of gizzards but about two or three hearts in there well every chicken has a heart and a gizzard or it can't live obviously so what do they do with all the extra hearts I'll tell you what Tyson does Tyson all natural chicken gizzards and hearts they put them in the package look at the hearts and the gizzards, almost equal amounts that were in the other package just like this that I opened. Let me show you something else. I'll move my little chicken hearts out of the way so I can show you what I did. I take a gizzard and this middle part is gristle. So I kind of trim off that side and then I turn it around and trim off this side as well. Over here is the bowl of gristle, which I'm going to throw away, and over here, when you cut it like that, each little one of these is almost like a little chicken heart size and has that same kind of texture to it. So these are going on our dish, these are going in the garbage. Now let me tell you, for you true gizzard eaters out there, you can cook the whole chicken gizzard gristle and all, as long as you simmer it for a long time, it gets nice and tender. But we're just going to use these in the hearts today, and we're going to move the frying pan over here and get started. Well, I shot in the kitchen and washed my hands after handling that raw chicken. I got a little splash of oil in there. This is one stick of butter, and I'm going to put three of those four chunks in there. And then I'm going to add my onions. This is just one great big sweet onion chopped into little teeny pieces in there. And I also got two cups of diced mushrooms. That's why I'm using so much butter. Them mushrooms, they just suck that right up. And I got a complete chopped up green pepper. And I'm going to chop up this red pepper for you. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can slide this thing over here enough to do this quick. Because I want to show you how I cut up these peppers. Because so I just chop the top off chop the bottom off, then you can just go right inside and make just three or four little cuts. That falls right out of there and there it is, ready to dice up. And if you just chop this and this and this and this here, now everything here can be diced. Let me get this diced up and add it in there. Alright, I got that whole red pepper chopped up and put in there. And I threw that other quarter stick of butter in there because the mushrooms are just really sucking up all that butter. Time for just a little bit of salt here. I'd say about a whole half a teaspoon, then you can always add to what you want to do. A little bit of pepper. And now I'll tell you something. I'm going to add one whole jalapeno pepper chopped up in here. And don't be afraid of jalapeno peppers, and I'll tell you why. There's something kind of going on in the industry that because so many people like jalapeno poppers where you put cream cheese and stuff in them and all that kind of stuff and deep fry them, the growers are actually making jalapeno peppers to where they're not as spicy as they used to be. Now, you guys that have your own gardens, you can grow some pretty hot ones. But let me show you something. When you chop up a pepper, cut the top off, the crown, and then cut off the little end and take the seeds out of the middle. But see this? I can eat it like a green pepper. It's a little teeny bit spicy, but that, would you think that you could pick up a chunk of fresh jalapeno pepper and just chuck it in your mouth and chew it up? It doesn't really have any heat to it at all. A lot of great flavor, little, little teeny bit of heat, but nothing. I ain't kidding you. It's like eating green pepper. So don't be afraid to put those, the ones that you buy in the store, in your favorite dish. But I'll tell you one other thing. You see these? 
Mount Olive jalapeno slices. These babies got heat in them. Don't chuck them in and think you can do or dig one out of the jar and just eat it because this will set your mouth on fire. These really have heat. So if you want to really turn up the wick on that, that's the one you want to put in for the heat. But the other ones, like I said, I just ate a couple chunks of that jalapeno pepper just like green pepper. It has no spice to it at all. It's really kind of weird. And I was discussing that with the guy that was stocking the shelves at Kroger. He said, because so many people are using those for jalapeno poppers, the growers are making them not as hot. So, now, it is time, a little bit left in that cup right there, it's time for our minced garlic. I'm going to put some of that in there, about a good tablespoon. This is going to get real good. Now I might, after this whole entire recipe is done, I might take part of that other chicken and put in there to put in some more chicken, but we're going to do that one package for this recipe now. Here's where you can decide if you want. I only got about a quarter of a cup of celery chopped up. Now I'm not big on celery on this dish. Now I love it in the Holy Trinity when you're cooking Cajun cooking, but on this dish I put it in there just because I like it if it's just a little bit of celery, like one stalk ch chopped up real fine. All right, let me cook this down for a little bit and I'll be back with you. Because we're going to simmer this for an hour or two, we're going to go ahead and put the rest of our ingredients in, starting with a can of Campbell's Cream of Mushroom Soup. Kroger's, Food Lion, I love all your products, but your Cream of Mushroom Soup sucks. This stuff is the best of the best. If you're going to do all this and spend this much time, use Campbell's Cream of Mushroom Soup. The flavor is so much better than the second rate stuff on the shelf. It's worth the extra 25 cents difference on the price. We're going to put in one can of that. Then we're going to put in a half a cup of half and half in there. I started making this a long time ago. I just had a bunch of peppers and a bunch of stuff because I wanted to do something else with those chicken gizzards. And man, you can put the, you can put this stuff on like my uncle Bob used to say, anything you want to prop it up on. Noodles, toast, anything straight up in a bowl. I just eat. I just get a big scoop of it and sit at the chair and watch football game and man oh man. Good stuff. So we got that in there. Now I'm going to go with a little more pepper. I'm telling you what, if I can't see pepper in my dish, whether I'm making coleslaw or a casserole or anything else, I add a little bit in there. If I can't see it, it's not enough. And the pepper isn't that hot either. It's really got a lot of flavor, but it's just not that much heat. Now, oh man, thank you Tyson. They don't sponsor us, but look at all them chicken hearts that are in that package. And I'm trying to tell Kroger's, tell your guys to put that in there and I'll buy your brand. And here is all of our chicken gizzards with all of the little gristle parts cut out of them. Man, this stuff is so, so good. Let me stir this for a little bit here and get it kind of leveled out. Then here's the magic tool that I use is this cooker here, but put it on about three on your stove if it goes one through ten. Put it on way down around three and just leave it simmer. I mean, so it just barely kind of bubbles. Here on this one, I'm going to put it on low, or actually medium low for now, to kind of simmer it down. And then I might even move it to low. But we're just going to leave this alone now that I got it all mixed in there. And again, don't have the tendency to want to lick the spoon because that's all raw chicken in there right now. So, and there we go. Does that look great or what? Now some of you people out there that have never had chicken gizzards and hearts, give it a try. You're just absolutely going to love it. I'm going to let this simmer for a good hour and we'll be back. 
Our pan fried chicken and gizzards have been simmering on the stove for about an hour. I took them in and put them on the stove in the kitchen, put it on number three because we were doing another recipe in here in the meantime. But man, this would be great on spaghetti. It would be great on noodles. I even got a couple slices of toast here that Sheila made and that's what we're going to serve it up on right now. But come over here. Before I disturb this, I want you to see the surface of this. Take a look. Oh man, does this stuff look incredible or what? I want you to see it before I broke loose all these wonderful juices in here. This is just terrific stuff. Time to dish some of this stuff up here. Wow. I hope the Packer game is on because that's what I'm going in to watch right now. There you have it. Man, oh man, pan fried chicken gizzards and hearts with all kinds of peppers in there and onions and goodies and garlic and mushrooms. It's just wonderful. I have a dilemma. I don't know whether to use a fork to spear some of those chicken gizzards or little hearts or to use a spoon to make sure I get all the stuff off the plate. Uh, well, I'll figure that out a little bit later, but right now we want you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on Little Shotgun Red's face when it pops up over here. We sure hope you do that. We want to thank all of our subscribers who have been following our recipes. You guys are just great. Over here I'm going to put another recipe that I really hope you enjoy. And man, is this the best chicken gizzard and heart, pan fried chicken gizzards and heart with all this sauce that you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila. Great job, Sheila. Thank you. I know this dish is pretty much for myself. I'll tell you what she did say, though, before I end this. She said, you know, when you got it all together and you were just ready to dump in the chicken gizzards and hearts, I'd like to have a bowl of that. I think I got her convinced that if I take the chicken gizzards and hearts out, the flavor will still be there, but then she can eat all these veggies and all this other stuff because she really likes the look of it and it smells fabulous. With that said, we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye, Sheila. Bye.